Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everything's going uh, good on your end. It's been a crazy week so far. Uh, not necessarily in a bad way, just a lot going on. Uh, a lot to uh, process and be aware of as we are making moves, trying to uh, improve what we're doing at the Odyssey Project, along with some things with uh, some of my other businesses. Uh, but I just wanted to take some time to drop in and first of all, uh, encourage you to make it your personal responsibility to be aware. When I look at all of the different mechanisms and machinations that serve as the arms and conduits of white supremacy racism, uh, one of the most infectious commonalities or common denominators when I see these instruments of suffering and oppression being levied against my people is the ignorance of my people. Now, when I speak of ignorance, I'm not speaking of it in a derogatory negative or assaultive manner in which we tend to use it against one another. I speak of it in the sense of the fact that we all bear a level of ignorance in this world. And that simply means the lack of awareness and knowledge of how something functions and operates. Because we don't know how things work, we tend to be easily manipulated and moved. It's easy to control how we are going to flow because we tend to operate off of how we feel instead of observing the structure and the operative mechanisms in play and discovering how we can decipher uh, the challenge, how we can break it down, how ultimately we can solve it. We've got to be able to read more frequently, to observe more frequently, to understand the processes of conducting non-biased research. We tend to do research that simply supports a biased opinion or idea that we currently have. We don't really truly know how to go out and truly analyze, break down, anatomize information to determine its validity, its credibility, uh, its probability of certainty, and so much more. We have fallen so far behind. We'll, I'm looking at so many things. We were manipulated again by the Democrats simply because we don't know how things work. We, we, we get played by the media every day because we don't know how things work. We are probably the most emphatic and emotive people when it comes to the COVID pandemic because we don't know how things work. We are the most easily manipulated and oppressed when it comes to the financial industry because we don't know how things work. We have to develop think tanks. We have to develop group thought into areas in which we are heavily impacted by a system that over time has decimated our families decimated our sense of place and purpose and belonging and robbed us of self of, of, of purpose and of being and most importantly of the power to function in our own natural state we are too dependent on a system that was designed to 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 be to elevate another group off of our backs and to hold us back we're going to have to do a better job of learning how things work. I know uh, it's easier said than done, but we've got to develop habits. One way that we are working on it here is to teach at an early age the importance of reading, to try to establish a passion for reading for our youth passion for learning, a yearning to know, to be aware, 
so much of what we endure is because we have an ignorance of self. We have an identity crisis on a massive level. We spend more time attacking one another than we do the system because we don't understand how things work. We're falling apart at the seams because it's easy to pull the thread of the seam because we don't understand how things work. There's so much turmoil. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot going on that we need to work on with us. That, that while it may in some way be precipitated by things that we've endured because of them, it's our responsibility to do something about it. One thing that really bothers me is the level of violence being perpetuated against black women by black men. Don't get me wrong and, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I've done the research. I've written on it and I know that black women assault black men pretty much at an equal rate as black men assault black women domestic violence wise. Listen, let me, let me clear that up. In the home, violence in the home, both parties somewhere roughly around between 24 and 26%. But here's the thing, when it comes to extreme violence that causes bodily harm and death, the numbers are drastically different. And my thing is, a black man should have it instilled within his psyche that he is not to bring harm to a black woman. It has to be a part of his makeup, mentally, emotionally, psychologically and spiritually to protect the black woman. And no, I'm not going to sit here on this and act like there aren't challenges with dealing with some black women. You know, a lot of times I go straight in and go ham and go back and I go to war with the brothers because they feel like I'm kissing up to the women. No, there's a lot to deal with. A lot of black women have a lot of issues that they're not willing to acknowledge. And black men catch a lot of that. But at no time does that justify harming a black woman. At no time does it justify doing anything to cause damage to a black woman. We have to be stronger. We have to build ourselves up. This isn't even about fair. As a leader, as a head, it's not about fairness. It's about responsibility. It's about knowing your role. It's about standing up and saying, hey, this is what I'm built to do. This is what I'm designed to do. This is what I'm here for. Does it mean sometimes you get a lip full of service from a woman that you've only shown respect to, open the door for or whatever, and you get flat back? Yeah. It, it, it probably does mean that somewhat, but what you have to sit up and do and understand, and what I find myself doing and understanding when I can uh, do something kind to a person just in passing, and they have an attitude with me is, I don't know, first of all, what they've been through in the immediate time, but I also don't know what they've been through in their life and how they perceive things and why, how they're reading and interpreting what I'm doing. Now, my thing is, I'm not saying make yourself a doormat. What I'm saying is you can't keep pointing the finger calling yourself a leader. Sometimes you got to suck that up and say, this is what I'm going to do. And it's not always easy. And I'm not just talking about in the home. I'm talking about we've got to create a safe environment where people don't feel comfortable harming our women. That's just one thing. There's so much more out there that we need to do, so much more, and we're so far behind. I am challenging everyone. This is a time to rise up and truly get behind something that matters in doing something. We talk, we watch, we look at videos, we go to seminars and, 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 and lectures from, from, from everybody and whatever, and we do conferences and all that. But we've got to have work. We've got to have a plan. We've got to have action. You know, I, I do what I can with Black Men Lead. Maria does what she can with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters. That is absolutely imperative that we do that work. But that's just us. There's so much more out there. But what I'm saying is you got to find something. you got to get involved. You know, we are well under-resourced. Um, you know, to the point that I, I, I don't hardly even mention it anymore. It's just like there's not that type of support out there. Now, if you get to where you are 
you know, sensationalizing things. You're jumping on all the gossip and you're going after somebody and attacking somebody and calling somebody out and beefing with somebody. You get plenty of following and support. You get some, it's amazing. That's not where I'm at. I, that's not where I'm at. I'll be 54 years old uh, this summer. And I really wanted to be in a place at, at by the time I'm 55 where I'm handing over the, boot, the boots on the ground element work that I'm doing. And I become a consultant and a counselor to young men who I've trained to step up and get out there and make things happen. That's my goal. That's what I'm working for. I'm not out here to beef with nobody. I don't care who has the top slot and who's the most liked and who's got. That, that doesn't matter to me. Um. You know, I, I tip it all the time. I, I, I can stroke my ego by myself. I feel myself enough for everything I need to feel good about. I feel myself enough for that. I know who I am. I know, I know what I've done in this world. And I know how I'm going to leave this world. And so I don't need that. What I need are people to see the work I'm doing and get behind it. Um, you know, whatever that means for you, it's not always finance, but definitely financial resources are essential. It's not that only, you know, we need people to train. We need people to go, you know, we supposed to be on a tour, you know, taking the black man lead uh, program and literally training people in different cities, never got support for it. So it, you know, it is what it is, but I'm not going to continuously move on on that. I'm, I'm trying to get some things done today, but I just had to stop in and drop that off to you. I hope that you can uh, take it at face value, uh, what it means to you. Uh, but we need work. We need to learn how things work. That means we need to be reading more. We need to be studying more. We need to be learning more about our history, not just on, not just during uh, February. This needs to be a year round thing. What we do is year round. The work we do and the passion we have for our people isn't confined to a month. Uh, we do this year round. And so my thing is I'm asking all of you to be a part of that. Uh, we've got to learn how things work. On that note, I'm getting out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.